Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and today we're going to be talking about some of the recent and extremely exciting research around the material that you see right here known as graphene. The material that in a sense could completely redefine our society and our civilization. And also something that many different scientists around the world studied for the past 16 years trying to discover a lot of really interesting properties of this strange material. But now we've discovered something else absolutely mind-blowing. So let's talk a little bit more about this and also some of the other major discoveries around graphene. Although there's no way I'm going to be able to cover everything because there's just way too much to talk about and way too many different things that this material is able to do. I would even go so far as to say that back in the days when the ancient alchemists were looking for this magical material that's able to do a lot of things and the material that is able to essentially dissolve everything or even provide things like immortality, well, in some sense, graphene actually is that one material that provides a lot of different solutions to various problems we have today. But let's actually talk about some of the major discoveries first. But also, what exactly is graphene? Well, it's basically something made out of graphite, you know, that stuff that you find inside the lead of your pencil. Normally, inside graphite, you'll find layers of carbon structured three-dimensionally, but if you were to somehow remove one of these layers, it will turn into something known as graphene, which also surprisingly starts to possess a lot of different functions that graphite did not have. One of these major functions is electroconductivity. Unlike graphite, graphene becomes electroconductive. So for the past 15 years, the scientists were trying to figure out if we can actually use this as a somewhat effective semiconductor for future electronics. Here's what the structure of this material looks like if you were to look at it in the electron microscope, and you can sort of see this unusual honeycomb formation that it creates, something that graphite itself does not possess unless you remove one of the layers. Now, we've actually known about graphite theoretically for many, many years, but it was originally rediscovered and, in some sense, isolated by these two wonderful researchers you see right here, who back then were working in the University of Manchester and they won the Nobel Prize for their discovery, but it was actually made using these tools right here. They used a piece of graphite and then they used a typical scotch tape to try to extract thin layers of graphite, turning them into graphene. Discovering in the process that this was also apparently one of the strongest, if not the strongest materials on the planet. But we've also known for a very long time that it possesses strange electromagnetic properties and because of its structure, a lot of the electromagnetic properties can be actually modified by changing the structure. And so, for example, in one of the recent studies that was released only a few months ago, the scientists were able to create these shapes that you see on the screen by essentially folding the graphene sheet into a slightly more deformed sheet. This was done by introducing atoms of boron in it to create these unusual structures. And what this ended up changing inside the graphene sheet is, well, it essentially turned it into a magnet. By changing the three-dimensional structure of graphene, the scientists were able to turn graphene into magnetic graphene, which by itself will already provide so many different applications for this unusual material. But that's actually not even the most exciting discovery from the past few months. The most exciting discovery is in regards to something that many different physicists, including the famous Richard Feynman, always believed to be kind of impossible. Essentially finding a way to generate energy from what's known as Brownian motion, from the motion of the particles themselves. If you remember from the chemistry class, Brownian motion is defined as this random activity of different atoms and different molecules, which essentially results in a completely impossible to predict um, motion of particles, something that, for example, increases as you increase temperature and decreases as the temperature drops closer and closer to the absolute zero. And naturally, by itself, there is really no way for us to somehow generate work or energy out of this motion, because it's unpredictable, because it's in every single direction, it's just kind of impossible to turn this into something useful. Which is, of course, something that most physicists believed for a very long time. But it looks like that particular belief might be broken now. Once again, due to a discovery that was made only a few weeks ago that you can also read more about in the paper in the description below. And this time, the scientists from University of Arkansas developed a very interesting circuit able to capture the Brownian motion of graphene and essentially turn it into electrical power. Not a lot of power, but power nonetheless. 
And as you can see in this animation from the Delft University of Technology, Graphene is able to exhibit a lot of different types of motion. And some of this motion, even though technically it is Brownian motion, doesn't actually act like a typical gas or fluid. It's a lot more defined and a lot more predictable. And because it's only one single sheet, we can hypothetically create a very unique circuit that essentially captures the motion of graphene as it sort of wobbles back and forth and then generates energy based on this motion, which is essentially the simplification you're looking at right here. This circuit was able to generate power and create tiny amounts of current that hypothetically, if you were to scale it to large proportions, could actually provide relatively large amounts of energy by essentially using nothing but the Brownian motion itself. In other words, the only thing that's happening here is the natural oscillations of atoms. That's where the work is coming from. But because they're more orderly and because they sort of generate predictable motions, and also because graphene is electroconductive and is able to send electrons back and forth, the scientists in the study were able to definitively show that tiny, tiny amounts of current and voltage were produced when the graphene was just vibrating and essentially nothing else was affecting it. Now, because the amounts of current we're talking about were like in nano ampere and also nano voltages, we're still not there yet where we can use this to, for example, power your house or, for example, provide free energy for your electric vehicle. But because tiny amounts of current can then become larger amounts of current if you use more graphene, one day we could actually use this to produce tremendous amounts of energy completely for free by using nothing but carbon itself. Which is kind of ironic because right now the biggest issue with a lot of electrical production is the excess of carbon that's produced and released into the atmosphere. So it's very possible that this is actually the solution we've been looking for. Finding a way to turn carbon back into graphene and then start creating energy that way. Now this is still really really sort of far in the future and also we don't even know if this is going to be an effective way to generate energy. But right now the scientists are proposing that their current discovery could hypothetically be used in some of these smaller devices, like for example powering something that requires a relatively small amount of current, such as maybe pacemakers or a lot of other tools where batteries cannot be replaced quite easily, but require a long-term functionality and relatively small amounts of current. And according to them, you could technically place approximately a million of these circuits in a tiny millimeter by millimeter square, and this would hypothetically provide just enough electricity to power some of the low power devices. But though the theory itself is definitely there and it does seem to make a lot of sense, the problem right now would be making that million circuits. Because when it comes to manufacturing massive amounts of graphene and especially creating these tiny circuits, we're still really really far from being able to do so effectively. As a matter of fact, using a tape right here might be the most effective way we have right now. And all of the graphene that was uh, created last year, for example, was only mostly used for research purposes. Only about $9 million worth of graphene was produced, and that's actually very, very little, considering that we would need so much more, thousands and actually millions times more, just to create a tiny little battery. So in that sense, this is still a very expensive and somewhat time-consuming process. Even though the theory is there and we can hypothetically produce infinite energy by just using Brownian motion of graphene, we just don't really know how to make it effectively just yet. And that's of course the next step and potentially the next Nobel Prize to be won by someone else who finds a very effective way of producing massive amounts of graphene that we can then use to create so many different tools. With hopefully the first such tool being an extremely effective space elevator where the elevator cable would be made from massive amounts of um, graphene. So far graphene seems to be the best candidate for creating such a device. Nevertheless, this is a super exciting discovery and will hopefully in the next few decades help humanity to overcome both the carbon excess problems and the energy problems we're going to be having in the next few decades. But I guess until we learn more about graphene or until we discover something else exciting about this unusual material, that's all I wanted to mention in this video. Check out the paper in the description below, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something you may have not known before. Maybe support this channel on Patreon or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description below. I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye-bye.